You know, there were plenty of great games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but sometimes it's just too hard to figure out what you want to play. Sometimes I really want to play Mega Man, which is a game that does involve some strategy for trying to figure out how to beat a boss, what weapon to use, and how to go about doing it. But sometimes I just want to play a game like Double Dragon where I just beat the crap out of anything that I see in front of me. I wish there was a game that could satisfy both my yearnings. Huh. That's weird. Let me try another game. Shatterhand for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh man, this is such a great game. I can't wait to play this. Let's boot it up. Where am I? Mike Tendo, Video Land is in dire need of your assistance. Oh crap, I'm not inside another game, am I? Not exactly. Though you are warped into the Nintendo video game, Shatterhand, it's actually your mind that resides here, not your body. Your body is held at the end of time. Listen pal, I've already died once in a video game. I'm just lucky that there's no canon in low-budget internet video game review shows. So, why choose me? Video Land is being torn asunder by the evil robot cult enemies from the game Shatterhand. And the people of this fair world need your help. You will take on the power of Shatterhand, helping to destroy the group known as the Metal Command, and save Video Land from the powers of evil. For you are Mike Tendo, the Game Master. Uh, I mean, I don't feel any different other than being dressed in 80s fashion. Hey, what did you call me? You are Mike Tendo, the Game Master. Don't you mean Game Master? That's what I said. No, you said Game Master. There's a difference. But is there really? Yes, there is! <laughs> Plenty of video games in the NES library that gamers have been sifting through, trying to rediscover a spark of their childhood. Many titles had something different to offer, and several just bit off the best of the business. Setting nostalgia aside for a moment, tons of today's games are afraid to be games for so long that we often forget the past. Take a game like Shatterhand, a title that tries to take its ridiculous plot seriously, creating a final product that is over the top and silly. However, thanks to top-notch controls, unbelievable music, and unique gameplay ideas, it provides a fun and frantic difficulty level that feels more balanced than about 90% of video games released in the modern era. Shatterhand takes everything we love about video games and lets us have a blast with it. You know, it'd be helpful to know what I'm fighting for, don't you think? I told you already. Video Land. Uh-huh, and how does that benefit me again? Because you're Mike Tendo. The gay. Are we really gonna reuse that joke? Don't you have some kind of manual to read me or something? You're really no fun. People actually watch your show? Nope. Many video games in the early days didn't completely survive their transition from East to West culture. Take Tokyo Shire Soul Brain, 
an action game released for the Famicom in 1991. Based on the hit television show of the same name, the show was part of a trilogy of series called the Rescue Hero Trilogy. There were several changes made to the game, mostly music, boss placement, and character changes, and the removal of a theme park stage in favor of a nuclear submarine. Since the show never left Japanese shores, the rest of the world received the doctored version that's also better known as Shattered Hand. With the name change came a plot that is so preposterous, it stands out as one of the most unnecessary complex stories in the history of retro gaming. I think this could give Midnight Resistance a run for its money. The year is 2030. No, not 20XX, they actually put a year of existence into it, so we'll be able to scoff at the ridiculous plot ironically when we're in our twilight years. The medical industry now has the capabilities to replace limbs for amputees, or, I suppose, people looking to upgrade themselves. Some scientists created these for what appears to be military reasons. Wait a minute. This sounds like the plot to Robocop. Just wait. It gets sillier. The plot thickens as a small group of scientists, led by the one known as General Gus Grover. Now that's a name that strikes fear into the hearts of men. Talking about stupid names? You call yourself Mike Tendo. You really are the Game Master. They form an empire called the Metal Command, and decide to create a cyborg army to take over the world. Of course, what would a group of bad guys be without good guys? Another alliance called the Law and Order Regulatory Division is formed with more scientists fighting against the Metal Command who create, yeah, you guessed it, Shatter Hands. Metal Hands so powerful that they can break metal upon impact. But wouldn't your hands need the strength of your arms to go with it? If you had unbreakable metal hands, wouldn't your arms just cave in when you... You're bringing up physics in the 1990s video game. True. Throw logic out the window and jump into the role of ex-cop Steve Herman. His hands have been amputated after being crushed by two Metal Command cyborgs. Lord helps Steve Herman become Shatterhand and send him off to do battle against the evil that plots to rule the world with a literal iron fist. Is the plot ridiculous? Absolutely, it's a Nintendo game from the early 90s, where story wasn't important. It's convoluted, nonsensical, and over the top, but really, so are most video games. And many of us wouldn't have it any other way. So, to those that judge Shatterhand based on its story alone, don't read the manual, just hit start and begin your badass journey. Graphically, Shatterhand has a very simple look to it. Sure, there's your standard warehouse, forest, and water levels, but the design is mostly simplistic on a visual level. Chain-link fences in the background can be used to climb. There are some sprites that have some impressive animation, but overall, Shatterhand isn't visually breathtaking, just competent enough to look decent. It gets the job done. When it comes to music and sound effects, Shatterhand has one of the most rockin' soundtracks on the NES. Filled with incredibly epic action theme songs, you'll be traveling at a head-bobbing pace while fighting the evil Metal Command unit. The influence of Japanese developers is quite clear in these songs, where the layout of each layer is perfectly crafted. Though, with the history of the composers themselves, it's easy to see why the tunes are solid, uplifting, 8-bit metal. Composers Iku Mizutani and Hiroki Iwatsuki have worked together on numerous classic video game soundtracks, creating the soaring, speedy melodies and tight, crisp sound effects, and on Shatterhand, they certainly shine the brightest. If these two are involved, you're often getting some of the best audio in the industry, and Shatterhand is certainly no exception. So I thought you said I have to, like, save the world or something? Uh, we'll get to that. What are you wearing? The outfit from the game. Why? Well, I mean, white t-shirt and jeans isn't exactly the most optimum battle armor, but 90s bicycle shades and a vest? How is that tactical? Tactics schmactics. This look is going to be in in the year 2030. Gamers might feel the need to scoff at only seven levels to play through, but developer Natsume does a great job in offering substance with shortness. Levels are the perfect length and offer substantial challenge with rewarding gameplay. Each level has its main draw that is typical of most action games. Ice, water, fire, all the elements come out to play. Plenty of these obstacles will be in your way during your travels. There's a level involving gravity which allows the player to focus on the best possible way to dispatch enemies. 
What I love about these gravity levels is they force you to slow down your approach and use the application of logic and physics to figure out how it would be best to attack and progress. In fact, there are many moments in the game where fools rushing in will quickly learn that in Shatterhand, it's not about the quickest playthrough, but the most satisfying experience. Because enemies are spread out in a traditional fashion, on the ground and on the ceiling, approaching each enemy, even a grunt like this guy, always has a purpose. While the game rarely suffers from respawning enemies, the ones that do add challenge, not annoyance, to the gameplay. Shatterhand does a fantastic job of teaching the player to learn from their mistakes. Trying to blow through a boss fight without learning patterns will cost you several playthroughs of a stage before you finally sit down and think about how to combat each situation. Speaking of combat, Shatterhand features some of the most well-designed combat mechanics on the Nintendo Entertainment System. While your character is strong enough to take on enemies with his own fist, he also collects these symbols that can create a little robot buddy for him to use on his adventure. There are eight possible combinations, and while some are really worthless, others give the range necessary to take out enemies from afar. What really makes the design brilliant is that it allows you to focus on how to attack enemies from a distance instead of just blazing through each level. This is where Shatterhand stands out as a groundbreaking title. The robots picked up give you different ways to maximize your protection over Herman. Not only do they take damage for you, they also help aid by hurting while taking damage if they touch an enemy. While these helper robots enhance the game's strategy, it can also cause frustration as some attacks feel worthless in almost every situation. Look at this, the distance of his punch is worse than the main characters, and the energy balls rising up don't do much for our hero. Sometimes you'll be in a rush to grab the power-up, accidentally grabbing the wrong one. It's a mistake that's not able to be overturned, causing frequent restarts and suicides just to get the best weapon for the enemies. Regardless, as a character that's limited by his close-range attacks, it's refreshing to have an attack that gives our hero some projectile distance to his punches. Well, I should probably be honest with you. I may have lied a little bit about why I brought you here. What are you talking about? Well, so, okay, I'm a huge fan of your show, and I really wanted to see you review a game in person. You guys get the internet in video land? Well, you are aware that Nintendo did support a modem, right? Yeah, in Japan. Dude, send me home, will ya? If there's no bad guys to fight, I'm outta here. Only if I can get your autograph. Fine. Happy? Oh, man. This is going on my mantle. Thank you for your assistance, Mike Tendo, the Game Master. Stop overusing that job! Sometimes you're left in a situation where your robot buddy is gone, you've just died at the hands of a boss, and they're starting you off at that same boss. Despite all the bosses being able to be destroyed without relying on the robot pals, they certainly do make the game a lot easier. While each level's design sometimes complements the boss, the enemies all feel very different. Sure, we've got our traditional commando-style baddies, augmented robot suit dudes with handlebar mustaches, annoyingly hard to attack ceiling things that spit out smaller enemies, but with those bad guys comes the alien blobs, the cyborg aliens, and the spiky floating garbage orbs, and more. Main bosses in each level don't all look the same, which is smart because it gives the game a more defined feel. I'd say Shatterhand's weirdness oftentimes overextends its sci-fi normalcy, and that's a good thing. It's comforting to note that frequent deaths in the game are almost always the player's fault. Deaths don't feel cheap, and you'll fall to rushing in too quick or just not getting the patterns of bosses down correctly. My one complaint is the final stage tries to approach things in a more Mega Man fashion by including previous bosses to fight in the final stage. The only thing is, is that if you die, no matter where you are in this stage, it puts you right back at the beginning, even if you clear most of the recurring main bosses. It's time consuming and doesn't actually prove that you're overcoming any kind of advanced challenge. It's just breaking the standards set throughout the earlier parts of the game. If that happened every level, then we'd expect for this to happen in the final stage, but it doesn't, so it shouldn't. Oh. oh, talk about playing with power. All right, where was I? Oh yeah, 
Other than this single flawed moment, Shatterhands offers up an incredible video game experience. Combining solid music and sound effects, along with incredible gameplay that really gets the mind thinking, Shatterhand is one of the must-play Nintendo Entertainment System titles. Hmm. Hey, that asshole sold my wallet!